Today we're going to be talking about how to use midpoint rule for triple integrals to estimate the volume of a solid. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to estimate the volume of the function cosine of x, y, z, where this function is sitting on top of a cube defined by this region b. So we're saying that the solid cube is a solid b. b is defined by these intervals for x, y, and z. It lies between x equals 0 and 1, y equals 0 and 1, and z equals 0 and 1. We've been asked to divide this volume into eight equal subboxes to estimate it. So here's what that's going to look like. The first thing I want to do is draw a picture of our cube, our volume, so we can get in general an idea of what our solid is going to look like. So if we say that this is our three-dimensional coordinate plane with axes x, y, and z, and we say that the cube has one of its corners at the origin, right? Because x, y, and z, their intervals, their domains, all start with zero. That means that we have one corner or one vertex of the cube at the origin, the point zero, zero, zero. Now the interval for x is going to extend out from zero to one. So if we call this point x equals one along the x-axis, this is the side length here of our cube, which is one, one minus zero, right? We also know y is from 0 to 1, so if we say that 1 is right out here, we can say that that's the side length of our cube there, and let's say that this is z equals 1 here along the z-axis, so there's our cube. So if we try to sketch this out a little more, we'll see that the base of our cube, if I draw this line parallel and this line parallel to these other axes, we'll see that this here is the base of our cube, and I can draw each side of the cube here along these coordinate planes like this. So our cube's starting to take shape. Now we need to divide this volume into eight equal subboxes. Well, the easiest way to know how many across, how many wide, and how many tall boxes we're going to have, because we're dealing with a cube, we can just take the third root of eight. Well, the third root of eight is two. That means we need to have two by two by two. If that's not intuitive to you, you can always just take the third root. But basically, we're going to be dividing this cube into two by two by two. That means dividing each length here in half. So we're like dividing each of these in half like this so that we end up with two by two by two and we can do it this way too. So then if we were to draw one of these cubes and we can use a different color here, we'll say that this cube, this little mini cube with its vertex at the origin is just defined by this space right here, and we can even draw the front of it if we say that it looks like this and coming down like this. So we'll say that's one of eight cubes. You notice we'd have one, two, three, four here on the bottom, and then the same four on the top. One, two, and then three and four here on the top. But this is just one cube of the eight. We're looking for the midpoint of that cube. So this is not going to be perfect, but if I drew a point right in the middle of this cube, if you imagine this point hovering in the middle of this cube, and it would be like slightly obscured by this front line here, but there's that point hovering in the middle, that is the midpoint of this cube. So we're going to use eight midpoints to estimate the volume of this cube. Using these midpoints, the formula for our estimate for the volume is going to be, and we'll go ahead and say volume approximately equals, we need the volume of each individual cube. So what's the volume of this cube? Well, if you look at the side lengths of each one, the side length of the larger orange cube is 1. So the side length of this smaller cube is 1 half, right? We have 1 half tall by 1 half long by 1 half wide is the side length of each one. So 1 half times 1 half times 1 half is 1 eighth. We get the volume of each little cube, and we say the volume there is 1 eighth. Then we're going to be multiplying this by the sum of our original function, cosine of x, y, z, evaluated at each midpoint. So what's the coordinate point that represents this midpoint right here? Well, you know that it's right in the middle of this cube, which means it's halfway 
along this x side length right here, right? This side length starts at zero and it goes to one half. The midpoint is halfway between zero and one half. So we know that it's at one fourth for its x coordinate. So we say f of one fourth. For the y coordinate, we know that it's halfway between zero and one half here. So the y coordinate is also one fourth. And for the z-coordinate, we know that it's halfway between 0 and 1 half this way. It's hovering right in the middle, suspended in midair. So we know that the z-coordinate is also 1 fourth for that cube in particular. But what if we looked at the cube that was sitting on top of this square right here on the bottom row of this larger cube? If we're looking at the cube sitting right here in this spot, what we know is that it's halfway between 1 half and 1. Well, halfway between 1 half and 1 is 3 fourths. So we know that we're going to say f of 3 fourths for x. What about for y? Well, it's going to be lined up with this other midpoint right here. It's still halfway between 0 and 1 half. We haven't changed the y coordinate, so the y coordinate is still going to be 1 fourth. The z coordinate is still going to be 1 fourth as well. It's lined up with this other midpoint, so we're going to get 3 fourths, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. If we look at the cube that's sitting on top of this square right here, our x coordinate is going to stay the same, right? We're still halfway between 0 and 1 half, so f of 1 fourth for the x value. But for the y value now, we're halfway between 1 half and 1 right here. So for the y value, we're going to get 3 fourths. For the z value, we're still going to get 1 fourth. It's still halfway between 0 and 1 half right here. So 1 fourth for z. For this fourth cube here, on the bottom row sitting on top of this space right here. We're going to get f of, for x, again, we're halfway between 1 half and 1, so we get 3 fourths. For y, we're halfway between 1 half and 1, again, we get 3 fourths for y. And for z, we're halfway between 0 and 1 half, we're still on the bottom row, so z is still 1 fourth. So you notice now we've covered the entire bottom half of our larger orange cube, and you see basically that we have every different combination of these three values. Notice that z is always 1 fourth for these four on the bottom row, which makes sense, and we just alternate the x and y values. For x and y, we have 1 fourth and 1 fourth, we have 3 fourths and 3 fourths, we have 3 fourths, 1 fourth, and we have 1 fourth, three-fourths. So that's an easier way to remember if you don't want to kind of try to visualize every time. You can just use the pattern that we've got here. Now the good news is that for our top row, for this whole space up here, these four cubes that lie along the top like this, for these four, it's going to be the exact same coordinate points that we had before, except that we're going to change the z coordinate from 1 fourth to 3 fourths. So if we just start with this one, this first one here, f of 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, it's going to be the same f of 1 fourth, 1 fourth, but we change that z coordinate to 3 fourths. This second point that we found, f of 3 fourths, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, we're going to get f of 3 fourths, 1 fourth, we leave x and y the same, change the z coordinate to 3 fourths. Then for our third one, we'll get f of leaving x and y the same, 1 fourth, 3 fourths, but changing z from 1 fourth to 3 fourths. And then our last one here, this was the last one on our bottom row, we're going to leave x and y the same, 3 fourths, 3 fourths, and 1 fourth becomes 3 fourths, the z coordinate becomes 3 fourths. And now you can see we have 8 points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1 for each of our 8 sub boxes that we divided b into. And that's our estimation formula, our midpoint formula, for the estimation of this volume. Now all we need to do is plug these values into our original function, cosine of x, y, z. So we're going to get volume is approximately equal to 1 eighth times f of 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth is going to be cosine of 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth. In other words, cosine of 1 over 64. So we're going to cosine of 1 over 64. 
Here, we're going to get cosine of 3 fourths times 1 fourth times 1 fourth. You can see we're just multiplying each of these values together. So we're going to get cosine of 3 over 64. For our third point, multiplying the 3 together, again, cosine of 3 over 64. For our fourth point here, we get cosine of 9 over 64. For our fifth point, we get cosine of 3 over 64. For our sixth point, we get cosine of 9 over 64. Seventh, we get cosine of 9 over 64. And the last point, we get cosine of 27 over 64. And we're going to be adding those all together and multiplying by 1 8. So if you do this out on your calculator, you can simplify a little bit. For example, you can combine cosine of 3 over 64. We have three instances of those. So what we could do is say 1 over 64 plus 3 times cosine of 64 and cancel these two. We've got 9 over 64 three times, so we could say plus 3 times 9 over 64 and cancel these two. And then we have cosine of 27 over 64. Now we only have to add four terms together and then divide by 1 8. It's really important that your calculator is in radian mode for this calculation. Otherwise, you'll end up with a different answer, so make sure you're in radian mode. But your volume here, when you add all these together, and then multiply by 1 8th. If we approximate it to three decimal places, your volume is going to be approximately 0 0.985, which again is an approximation of the value of this volume right here, cosine of xyz, over the solid box defined by b.